HUD maker, an in-game tool for making your very own heads-up display within your RPG maker and the game within a amount of time. Yeah. First things first, of course you're going to download the plugin, link it in the description, then install it into your project just like this. We'll stick it up higher since it's a more maker style plugin, but stick it below the Super Tools engine as it is a child of that specific plugin. Once you have the plugin installed, you're also going to need some images to install with it. So linked in the description of this video, you'll find the pack of sample images to use. As you can see, I have them downloaded right here in my source directory. So I'm going to go inside of the zip file, go inside of here, and copy these four folders right here. So I copy, go back here, then go to image Images, some random dude, and create a new folder called HUD, just lowercase h-u-d, just like that. Go in there, and then paste those four folders, just like so. Now the entire directory should look like this. Image, some random dude, HUD, and then these four folders, each containing different images depending on the type of image style they are and stuff. Once you have those images installed, simply go into the map or battle and hit F12 to open the game tools engine. Simply click on the HUD maker choice just like that and you'll open up the HUD maker GUI editor thingy right there. Now at first, this may look a little intimidating, but I'll help step you through things. To start, let's focus on this corner right here. Now in the HUD maker, you're going to have elements or pieces that you use to construct your overall HUD. To create a new piece or element, you simply use a create new element section right here. All you simply do is select the type of piece you wish to create, so as you can see there's a lot of them, we'll just create a normal text and hit create new just like that. Once we do so, we'll have this new HUD piece selected and all these properties to manipulate right here. So as you can see, you can simply move this piece around by dragging it around with your mouse just like this. And as you can see, it snaps to the middle and the sides of the screen just like this. Yeah. As I also just mentioned, there's a long list of properties you can manipulate on this specific highlighted piece right here. As you can see, it's a text piece, so you can change the text properties for this text. For example, we can change the max width to maybe 300 like this, and it'll change the whole entire max width like that. We can set the alignment to maybe like center, and then make it so it's going to be in the center. And then we can change maybe the font size to maybe like 40 to make it even bigger, just like that. As you can see, whenever I change something, I hit the refresh button to make those changes appear in the main piece like so. Now we'll get more into the properties later, but for now let's focus on the main controls and mechanics of the HUD maker. To start, let's create some more pieces. So we'll create another text piece just like that, we can drag it around, and then we'll create a maybe gauge piece like this, and we'll create new and bam, now we have a gauge. As you can see, whichever piece we have most recently created is now highlighted and we can move that one around. But say you want to move around an old piece, simply go to this element manager place right here to change what element you're focusing on. As you can see right here, there's a list of all the elements we have on screen right now, so for example this text this text, and then this gauge right here. Simply click on the drop down and choose whichever one you wish. And of course, once you have that piece selected, you can then drag it around just like this. Say for example, you want to delete a piece, simply click on the delete button right here to delete the current highlighted piece. So as you can see, bam, deleted. Say for example, you want to clone a piece, simply hit clone and it'll clone the current highlighted piece and make a new piece just like this. While we're at it, let's also go through more of the controls of the HUD maker. As you saw, drag around with left click to drag the piece around just like this. But if you hold down control, as you can see the highlight turns green, and when the highlight is green, that means you aren't going to be able to snap to anything. This of course allows you to make things more precise during a snap heavy area, for example the corner right here. If we release, as you can see it's going to snap back to normal. Say for example, you want to lock the current piece to an X or Y plane, simply hold down Z or X as you see right here. When you're holding down Z, it'll be locked onto the X plane and be moved on the Y plane just like this, or when you're holding down X, it'll be locked to the Y plane and they can move around just like this. You can also combine this with control to make it so it's more freely moved while still sticking to a specific plane. If you want to move your HUD piece one pixel at a time, simply use the arrow keys to move it like so. So I'm pushing left and it moves left one pixel at a time. And then of course, if you want to move these pieces in greater increments, hold down shift and it'll move in increments of 10 pixels as you see right here. If you want a review on all the controls available, simply click on the controls tab right here to check them all out right here. Otherwise, you can simply go back to the maker tab to continue our process. Now that we understand the basic mechanics and controls, let's go over the options section right here. Let's start with the snap type. Now by default, your piece is going to snap to various global positions, for example the corners, the middle, the center, and then the sides as you see right here. But say for example, you want these pieces to snap to other pieces, simply click on this button right here to switch it to snap type relative. Now when snap type relative is turned on, it'll snap to the position relative to other pieces. So for example, the Y position of this piece right here, the X position of maybe the gold right there, and then the other like that. So as you can see, you can use this feature to simply align your current piece with other pieces just like this. Next is the highlight type. Now by default it's set to surround, but we've set it to overlay. As you can see, the highlight will overlay the current piece. Now this is 
purely based on your opinion. Do you like it overlaid or do you like it around it? Now around it is more better for things like gauges, but overlay may be a little better for like text as you see right here, we get a whole overlay over the entire section of this text. Once again, it's up to you which type you want to use and it's purely based on the situation or your own opinion. And now the final option is hidden pieces. Do you want to show them or do you want to hide them? Now at first this may seem kind of, it's not doing much, you don't see anything changing, but this does have a function. As you can see, each piece has a consistent condition input right here. No matter what piece we use, it'll always have that condition input. So as you can see, a picture has that condition. Say we use an actor face, it's going to have that condition right there. Now, as you can guess, this condition property determines whether or not this picture is currently going to be active and visible. Let's take, for example, this actor face. We'll set its condition to false, as you see right here, and hit refresh. Now, as you can see, the background has turned red, representing the fact that this condition returns a false value. Now, when we return to main, as you see right here, all the other HUD maker pieces remain, but the actor face disappeared. That's because during active play, that piece is returning a false value in its condition, making it so it's not appearing during gameplay. Of course, once we go back to the HUD maker, it'll appear once again, just like that. So using conditions, you can create complex JavaScript inputs that determine whether or not this piece will be active. For example, you make so this gauge is only active when switch three is turned on. So all we do is do game switches, just like that, dot value of three, like so, and hit refresh. Now, of course, since switch three is not turned on, this is returning a false value, and when we leave the game like this, it's going to disappear. But as you can see, when we go interact with this orc right here, he'll turn switch three on, just like this, and now, as you can see, that gauge appears just like that. Going back into the HUD maker, that gauge will now have a true condition, so as you can see, the background will be then green. Now, the purpose of explaining all this is to describe the hidden pieces feature. Now, say, for example, you have a lot of pieces. Some are going to be active at some times, some are going to be active at other times, and you want to keep things simple. What you can do is set it so hidden pieces show is turned to hide. That makes it so any pieces that would usually disappear during gameplay will then disappear from the screen like that, making building your HUD that much easier. Of course, it can be toggled on and off just like that, so you can change whether or not you want this to be active at whatever time. Now, finally, to finish off this episode, let's go over layering. Similar to conditions, each input will have a layer option just like this. So as you can see, our text has it right here, our actor face has it right here, and our gauges, of course, have it right there like so. Now, what the layer input does is it determines the exact stacking of the images. If they're on the same layer, as you can see, they'll be stacked based on their Y position. So above it, it'll go underneath, but below it, it'll go on top just like this. So so, yeah. However, if you want to force this gauge to appear on top, simply set its layer to maybe like 10. Be sure to hit refresh, and then, as you can see, it's going to remain on top of this actor face no matter what. Alternatively, if you want this gauge to be forced to remain under no matter what, simply set its layer to something lower than the current actor face layer, which is currently zero. So, for example, negative 10, just like that, and once again, we'll hit refresh. Now, as you can see, it will be permanently underneath the actor face like so. Layering is just another essential tool to building your HUD with these pieces on your screen just like this. And that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to give a thumbs up and be sure to click on the next episode annotated right here on screen. That's all for now. Until next time.